Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to change the layout of our image grid. Our image gallery currently has nice uniform squares, and we achieved this by setting the fill attribute to true on the Next.js image component, and we also use the Tailwind class object cover. The downside to this is that sometimes the images get cropped, and well, they usually get cropped, but sometimes better than others. And really, I want to see the full images. Like if we look at this tower image here, we can't see much of what we expect to be featured in the image, for example. So let's take a look at what our result will be after we're finished today. We're going for a gallery that's more like this, where we see the full height of the image, we see the full image, really, and our grid just shifts. So it's not as uniform, they're not squares all lined up in a row, but it's a nice layout where we can see the full image. And for example, in this tower image, now I see the full tower that was expected to be in the image. So currently, our images take up one row, but to get the different heights that we expect to get in our end result, we're going to need to decrease that row size and then calculate how many rows each image needs to take up to use their full height. The easiest way to really visualize this is to look at our end result here and then open DevTools, so Control Shift and the letter I, and now that I've got DevTools open, notice I'm on the Elements tab here, but underneath I've pulled this up and I've got Styles, Computed, I want to go to Layout. And here we can see a grid overlay, so I'm going to click on the section that is the parent, and now we see the grid overlays, and look at all of the different rows. I've set the rows to be 10 pixels high, and that's it and then we calculate exactly how many rows each image will take up. Now, as I mouse over and scroll, the grid rows disappear, but we can still see them when I move the mouse back. So you can see how this works, and it's really easy to see here on the white area. So we're going to actually shrink our rows down and then calculate how many rows each image needs. And we're in VS Code, and I am at the Gallery component, so inside the Components directory at gallery.tsx. What we want to do is scroll down to our section that is the parent for our gallery. And I'm going to press Alt-Z, I don't have that wrapping yet. What we need to do is add one more class here, and it's going to have an arbitrary value. So I'm going to say auto-rows for our grid, then the arbitrary value goes inside of brackets, just like an array uses. And now I'm going to say 10 pixels. This will make each row in our grid 10 pixels. Now if we go back to Chrome and look at our project, the rows have shrank, but we haven't calculated what the images should use yet, so really our images have just all stacked up, kind of like decks of cards or coasters on a table, if you will and we still have a lot of work to do in the image component. Back in VS Code, let's go to that image container component that we have, and inside, of course, is the image component itself. Now, we weren't doing anything really besides starting a return right away inside of the component, but now we're going to need to make some calculations before that return. So let's get just a little bit of space. The first thing I'm going to define is const and say this is width, height ratio. So we need to figure out what the ratio of the actual height is to the width. And we're going to do that with photo dot height that we get from our API information. Oh, I need to set an equal sign. TypeScript is not liking what it sees right there. Here we go. Photo height divided by photo dot width. And that will give us the ratio we need. After that, I'm going to call this next variable gallery height, I'm going to set this equal to math using the math object dot seal. So we're rounding up and then 250 because we're using 250 pixels for our set width times the width height ratio. After that, I need one more and this is going to be called photo spans. And really, we're just going to figure out how many rows the photo spans. And so I'm going to set this equal to 
math.seal once again. Now I'm going to use that gallery height that we calculated and divide by 10 because we're using 10 pixels for each row. And then I just want to add one to it. So I get a little gap between each image. I don't want them bumping right next to each other. I want to add just a little bit of space. So we've calculated what we need now with the width height ratio, the gallery height for each image, and then the photo span for each image as well. And now we're going to rearrange our component just a little bit. And I want to import one more import here. This is going to be link. So import link. That's going to come from next link. And we're just going to link each image back to its original URL at the Pexels website. So you could click any image you want and go back there. Just an added extra here. So let's scroll down now and we're going to break out our div. So to do that, let's create another div that is going to wrap around the image. So we've got the opening div, the closing div, we'll need to control X and put that after the image component. And now let's go ahead and add some of the classes that were on this parent div. We will take them and put them on this nested div instead. So to do that, I want to take rounded XL. So I'll do control X to cut and just control V to paste that in. After rounded XL, I also need the overflow hidden and group, both of those. So control X once again, and I'll just paste those in here to our nested div. Next, we can remove these classes. We'll no longer need to set a height here because we're calculating the height. We no longer need the background gray of 200 because we are already using that blurred data URL. And we won't need relative here because we won't be using fill any longer or that object cover on the image itself. What I do want to set is a width with the arbitrary value of 250 pixels. And then I also want to say justify-self-center. So we're just justifying this div, allowing it to justify itself actually. Now after that, we also need to calculate something for this div essentially. And that is how many row spans it's going to use, or we actually need to set it. We've already calculated it. So I'll just use style here because you can't calculate a Tailwind class and then apply it just right inside of your code. You'd need to set that up in the config and these are going to be different values. So it's just easier to use an inline style here. So I'm going to set the grid row then the value is going to be a template literal where we have span and then I'm going to put in that photo spans value, whatever that number is. And now let's go ahead and use the link we imported and I'm going to put that between the divs. So I'm surrounding this div and the image component with the link. So here I'll have link, the href is going to equal the photo.url and then let's add target equals underscore blank. And what that's going to do is open the image at the Pexels website in a new tab. So we don't close the tab out or navigate away from our website. And then after blank, I still need a class name line here. And let's add just a few class names. I need grid and then place dash content dash center. So we're really making the link to be its own grid and we're making sure all of the content in it is centered. I'll take that closing link and put it after this div right here. And I'm not sure why I have the letter L there. So I'll go ahead and delete that as well. Let's save. And that looks good. Now what won't look good right now is if you go look at our application because we haven't changed the image component itself. We're not going to use fill equals true any longer, so we can delete that. We are going to use a width and a height, so I guess I could put that right in there. The width we're going to set to a value of 250. Now after that, let's go ahead and set the height. And remember on remote images, the width and the height is really helping Next.js set the aspect ratio. It doesn't mean that the image will always render at these exact pixels. So here I want to put in gallery height. And now we should have the correct aspect ratio, the height being calculated based on 250 up here above as well. So now that we have that, our sizes are going to change. You could go back to calculate those if you want to, but really since we've set it to 250, 
I think we can just set it to 250 pixels here too. You can check with the linter. I have as well. I'm just saving the time and it should tell you this is exactly what you should have. Actually, if you have it set correctly, it won't tell you anything. So go ahead and set something that is not correct and then check to see if it says you should set it to 250 pixels. After that, we want to keep the placeholder. We want to keep the blur data URL, but now for the class name, we no longer need the object cover class. So we can delete that as well because we're no longer using fill and we're no longer setting the parent to relative. Now that we've completed that, let's go back and look at our image gallery. And here's our image gallery. Something doesn't seem quite right, but we are seeing all of the full heights of the images, so that's good. It's a little unusual here though. So let me check the classes and also anything that we might have missed. Back in VS Code, what I missed before was leaving the gap-2 in. We no longer need that, and that was what's creating that larger space. Also, let's drop that padding down to a 1. Other than that, everything else should stay the same. Let's go back and look at the application once again. Now we have the grid layout we want with just a little bit of space. Let's go ahead and look at all of the images on the page. That looks good. Now let's open up DevTools with Control shift i and now let's pull this up where we can look at the layout once again. Scroll up to Grid Overlays. Let's check that for the section, and we see all of the rows and the space in between that we expected. So now you have the advanced image layout for your gallery. And in the final video of this series, we're going to add pagination so you can look at more than just the 15 images that we receive because we receive pages and pages of images.